Hi everyone, this is a presentation by business climate leaders about the impact of fossil fuels on our oceans, putting seafood at risk. My name is Klaus Mager. I'm a volunteer for Business Climate Leader, which is an initiative of Citizen Climate Lobby. My background is in food and beverage. I was a, a director of food and beverage for the Walt Disney Company for 21 years. Was, the, was leading the opening teams, development teams for Disney's California Adventure and Hong Kong Disneyland, um, and also worked international for a food wholesaler based in Germany, Düsseldorf, operating in 30 countries as uh, in their corporate offices as head of target group marketing. Citizen Climate Lobby is an international NGO <clears throat> with over 140,000 members. Uh, we are represented in every congressional district in the United States, nonpartisan, nonprofit, and solution focused. The Energy Innovations and Carbon Dividend Act is the, the core product of Citizen Climate Lobby putting a fee on fossil fuels at the source, mine, well, or port, and returning all revenues to households equally. What Business Climate Leaders is working to do as an initiative, as part of Citizen Climate Lobby, is to translate the impact of fossil fuels to your industry? What does it mean to the future of your business? Um, we want to explain the need for a carbon fee, you know, why this is the most logical starting point to force change into Washington. And we also want to help members of industry to engage with legislators, with your legislators, to represent your needs and interests. So our volunteers are prepared to do that throughout uh, every congressional district in the United States. We received a request from the regional coordinator for the Gulf states, you know, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, to focus on the oceans and in particular on the seafood industry. Um, that was from a concern uh, the, the, of the tremendous impact the seafood industry already experiences. So this initiative has then been joined by members from uh, the Pacific region and uh, including Alaska and Hawaii to also uh, start a conversation around what does, uh, what does the future really look like for our seafood uh, industry. Um, so we <clears throat> received that request at Business Climate Leaders. Uh, it was passed on, passed, passed on to me to, uh, to uh, set up a, a discussion and explain you know, what we have been learning about that particular topic. So in a nutshell, um, there are three core impacts that are directly linked to the use of fossil fuels that profoundly impact the oceans and with that of course the seafood industry. The first one would be ocean acidification. Now, at least one quarter of the carbon dioxide that's released by burning coal, oil and gas doesn't stay in the air but it dissolves into the oceans. Now when it rains it brings the carbon down in the, into the ocean and when, when the CO2 comes in in connection with water it acidifies. That is you know, in itself a, a enormously important uh, 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 impact. The next one is ocean warming. The oceans have absorbed the majority of the heat, the additional heat that comes through the greenhouse effect that uh, uh, has increased since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution by actually 43% in the last 140 years. So this, the, the, the gases that form the greenhouse reflect the infrared spectrum of light, which is heat back to the planet. That heat has been absorbed to over 90% by the water of the oceans. Um, 
but it's now showing measurable, you know, uh, undisputable uh, levels of, of increasing the waters in the ocean. Nitrogen pollution is uh, the last part of these three. Um, excess fertilizer, you now made from fossil fuels, made in nitrogen, synthetic nitrogen is made with uh, natural gas. Um, in 2018, 120 million tons of synthetic nitrogen have been put on, uh, on agricultural fields. Much of that, most of that is running off uh, into, the water, into the rivers, into the lakes, and then ends up in the oceans, um, causing enormous uh, problems with algae plumes, which suffocate the water, creating dead zones, killing basically uh, all aquatic life. The impact of ocean acidification is on marine organisms that have shells, lobsters, mussels, oysters, um, marine snails, crabs, and so on. Um, and also, also stressing uh, coral reefs. But that is already uh, quite visible and, uh, and uh, uh, when you look at the king crab uh, uh, industry, when you look at fishermen specialized in Dungeness crab, for example, already severe impacts uh, can be seen all over the planet on caused by just this one factor, ocean acidification. Ocean warming, um, as I was stating in the previous slide there, uh, the oceans are absorbing about 20 times as much, uh, as much heat as stays in the atmosphere itself, which has enormous long-term consequences because as slow as the oceans are warming up, it will be as slow for them to cool down again. Now, once we finish, once we end uh, the, the use of fossil fuels and, and transition into a, into a renewable energy environment, um, it's, an, it's an incredible problem. Uh, the seafood industry is particularly impacted here by a factor called tropicalization. That means that warm water species of fish migrate further north than they ever have because the waters are warming. Whereas cold water fish, the ones that you are used to in Alaska, um, are migrating elsewhere. They're migrating further away in search of colder waters. Ocean warming also causes deoxygenation. Uh, the water can hold less oxygen uh, as it gets warmer and it also creates sea level rise because this thermal expansion of seawater uh, uh, adds to the overall rise uh, of the oceans. Nitrogen pollution um, an, an astonishingly undervalued factor you know, when you when you look at the amazing damage being done by the runoff from agricultural fields of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, which is which is made with with uh, natural gas, um, there they you you can you can see the impact of these nit of these runoffs in the Mississippi River Delta. Uh, at the Amazon from space. There are satellite images that show the algae plumes that are penetrating out of these riverbeds, creating dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico along the Florida coast. Um, it, it, it creates dead zones in rivers and lakes, uh, impacting the seafood industry in a profound way. Um, so that is one of the most immediate uh, things that uh, and members of the seafood industry should have an opinion on. You know, that, that is a, a, such a profound uh, a problem that the industry is facing here. It really deserves uh, a, a more discussion and attention than it, than it does get. Coral reefs um, deserve a discussion on their own. The, the uh, threat that fossil fuels pose to coral reefs by a combination of acidification and warming is just incredible. So we have a couple slides here to, to take a little bit deeper dive into that particular topic. So the role of coral reefs 
is not fully appreciated uh, how important the coral reefs really are to the well-being of the oceans. 25% of fish stocks spawn there and juvenile fish spend time there before making their way out into the open sea. 25%. In addition to that, the coral reefs are host to phytoplankton. Phytoplankton generates somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of the of the planet's oxygen. So the 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 disappearance of uh, or the well-being of coral reefs not is not only important for fish itself but also for the oxygen within within the oceans. Um, enormously. Uh, uh, important when you think what how, how small they really are less than two percent of the ocean itself is is covered with coral reefs so they're basically the rainforests of the sea so it is now estimated that 90 percent of the world's coral reefs will die by 2050 just think about that for a moment 90% of the world's coral reefs will die by 2050. That means 50% of the planet's oxygen production will be gone. 25% of fish stocks, global fish stocks, will lose their spawning crowns. Already, the planet has lost, <clears throat> over the last 30 years, about half of these underwater rainforests. So that is an amazingly scary statistic um, which which is which is so underappreciated no, it is it is actually very scary so citizen climate lobby has uh, already uh, uh, been able to get the energy innovations and carbon dividend act hr 763 into congress uh, ready to go and so I want to talk about that in, in a little bit more detail because we truly believe that this is the critical first step to take to get the attention of the legislator focused on the issue of fossil fuel. So the first step of the Energy Innovations and Carbon Dividend Act would be to place a fee on fossil fuels at the source, mine, well, or port then return all revenue to households equally. And there have been a number of studies. Uh, in fact, there, is, uh, uh, there, there, is new, there, there are new studies out there the, uh, what, what beneficial impact that would have on the economy overall. Um, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but would like to get you interested enough to please uh, take a look at it in more detail and see how much sense that really makes. There is a border adjustment uh, in, uh, uh, as part of this bill for goods that are being imported from or exported to countries that do not have an equivalent price on carbon to uh, keep uh, a level playing field here. We strongly believe when you, when you think about uh, the, the political implications of trying to fix a complicated uh, immensely uh, complex uh, economy like that of the United States and, and solve issues related to the use of fossil fuels, it's, a, it's virtually impossible to do this in a fair and equitable way. So placing a fee on fossil fuels is, the, is, is making what we want to use less of more expensive. Yeah. So the, the, it, it is the core element of uh, economics, and this bill has been supported by uh, a range of Nobel Prize winning economists, uh, politicians all over the world as the, as the step to take to, to get started seriously and, uh, and uh, mitigate uh, the, the use of fossil fuels. There are many leading companies who have already signed up for a carbon tax. I mean, look at the uh, Shell, BP, Exxon, uh, uh, many more companies than we're showing here uh, are in support of it because it is simply the most logical uh, way to, to get out of the use of fossil fuels to reduce or eliminate the subsidies that are going into 
uh, into oil and gas and coal and shift that uh, towards renewable sources of energy. So what can you do to help? What, can, what are we asking here? First of all, endorse the Energy Innovation and Climate Dividend Act. Um, support participation in lobbying activities. And this is really uh, the, something I want to point out for members of the seafood industry. The uh, agricultural industry, the farmers, have already uh, carved out an exemption for diesel fuels loosed, being used uh, in, in farm operations because they were at the table early on and they have a, a very strong lobby. The seafood industry uh, has not been heard of, so I think it would be very important for members of the seafood industry to also engage here and, uh, and participate in these lobbying activities. The bill is already in the House. Once this thing goes, it will go fast. You know, it will go uh, simultaneously into multiple uh, committees. And if there is no preparation, if nothing uh, has been done to uh, get ahead of the curve here, the seafood industry may be at a disadvantage. So we want you to, to help influence trade associations and chambers of commerce, activate your supply chain, you know, because this is obviously not just the problem of the fishermen, but the entire seafood-focused supply chain is being impacted here and then educate your employees on climate change as well because they're also voters and they also share you know, their opinions. So with that, um, I've posted the link to this PowerPoint uh, at, the, uh, at the YouTube uh, field below the video. Um, please feel free to engage, look at the slides that uh, uh, look at the links that support the arguments I've been making here. Um, and by all means, if you have a question, please do contact uh, me, contact someone from Business Climate Leaders or Citizen Climate Lobby, you know, join a local chapter and get engaged. So in conclusion, we have a call to action which would be sign our seafood industry climate declaration, join a local CCL chapter, and 